Hello? Okay, we have lightning fast turnovers at the inaugural user meeting. So none of this sitting around for 10 minutes while we swap computers around. We're good, we're ready, we're good to go. So what I'm going to be talking about then this morning for 27 of the allotted 30 minutes is a couple of features that we're adding to the Quadril UC system um, in version 14.1. I'm going to talk about support for gestures. Um, we'll come to that later. But in the first instance, I want to talk about desktop scaling um, in, um, in Windows. And this is related to um, high DPI screens and so on. So join me, if you will, as a stroll, a nostalgic stroll through monitors and resolutions of, of the years. Back when I started at Dialog something, <clears throat> something years ago, I think I had a 12-inch monitor on my, on my desk. It probably did 640 by 480 uh, pixels on it. It was a tiny thing, about 65 dots per inch. If I remember correctly, it was either black and white or quite possibly one of those orange and black screens that you used to have back in the day. But the point was, it had 65 dots per inch, which means that a font that was about 16 pixels high was just about sort of readable and, and, and everything was good. Then I, times moved on, I had a 14-inch monitor, 1024768, then we were hitting 96 dots per inch and a 16-pixel high um, font and a 32 by 32 pixel high icon. It was nice on the screen, it was a good size and I could click on it without struggling to find it. Life was good. These days, maybe we've got 24-inch monitors, now we're running maybe 1080p or 1200 uh, rows of pixels. And still, it works out at about 96 dots per inch. You know, everything's nice size, we can click on it, we can read things, everything's good. Right now, it's about eight foot by six foot. Okay, <laughs> we're, we're, we're kicking here. We're rocking about 11 dots per pixel. Okay, this is going to make things tricky for, to be, for me to demonstrate the problems that I'm trying to demonstrate to you. <laughs> These days, you can get a 28 inch monitor, um, 4K resolution, much more pixels. This thing's rocking 156 dots per inch. Okay, so those fonts that we've got that are 16 pixels high and those icons that we've got that are 32 by 32, about half the size, harder to click on, harder to read. The picture gets worse. You can get a 15.6 inch laptop from Toshiba that's got 2,160 rows of dots on it, 282 dots per inch. If you've got a 16 by 16 font on there or a 32 by 32 icon, you, you, you can't see that stuff. <laughs> uh, it's also not cheap. So here's my problem. I'm not as young as I used to be. My eyes clearly aren't as good as they used to be. My beard is grey. The, the other great indicator, I think, these days of increasing experience, let's say, is the inability to take selfies. I can't do selfies. I try to do selfies. I try so hard to do selfies. I can't, I can't get this right. My most successful selfie this week was that. Although we were in the restaurant the other night and the guy behind me was very happy with the selfie that I took. So I'm getting old. The... I, I'm beginning to see now the, the sense in this desktop scaling thing that, that, that you have in Windows. And you've probably all seen um, what I'm going to show you. The problem is then screens are getting bigger and smaller at the same time. You can get this 15.6 inch laptop with more dots than, than we ever used to dream of. And you can get 60 inch monitors with 4K resolutions. There was a thing on... Line, I think the kids are calling it these days. There was a thing on Line... Um, I think Toshiba are now experimenting with an 8K TV. I, I know I already want one. But, but again, everything's getting bigger and smaller at the same time. It, it's, it's, it's complicated. Windows is predominantly a pixel-based thing. It would be great if, as developers, we specified the size of things in points all the time and all of this scaling just all went away. And in fact, WPF 
is sort of going that way a little bit. A lot of the problems that, we're going to, that I'm going to illustrate to you today don't happen in WPF because it does it for you. But when you're talking to Win32 and you're using Dialog's Quad WC, generally we're dealing with Win32, which is pixel-based. And then these, the fact that a pixel now is a fraction of the size that it used to be becomes a, a big deal. Um, so generally, stuff on your screen needs to get bigger. So what Bill's solution is, Bill being Microsoft, for many years we've said, oh, Bill's done something silly again. Bill Gates, Microsoft. So Bill, I, a.k.a. Microsoft solution, is to provide a mechanism for the user to say, look, I'm not as young as I used to be. I want things on my screen to be somewhat larger. And you've probably all seen this thing on your, somewhere in your windows. And if, if you were like me, you, you had no idea what it was doing. Okay, and, and sometimes you may have seen this, this flavor of the same box. But basically what this is telling the operator, operating system is that um, it's just to make everything bigger. In, in this case, this machine at the moment, this laptop, is set up at 150% scaling, okay, which basically is telling the operating system and telling applications to make everything half as big again as you would by default. Okay. And... Um, and what happens is so things like your menu bars and your caption bars and your menus and your scroll bars and everything else are automatically scaled up by Windows for you. But the bits of your application that, that you're in control of, you have to handle yourself. And interestingly, actually, um, that previous box went up to 250%. I was at a Microsoft conference in the past where, um, <laughs> where the guy there said, really, these days, the way the technology is going, you should be testing your applications at a 500% scaling factor, which is slightly tricky because Windows 8.1 only goes up to 250% at the moment. <laughs> this box only goes up to 250%, which is already extra, extra large. <laughs> so every 50% is an extra, extra. <laughs> so by the time we get to 500%, we're extra, 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 extra large. <laughs> so they're going to have to scale the desktop to get the extras in. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, and here actually is a reference to this, this thing that I watched. I would recommend that anyone who has an interest in this uh, looks at this and reads it. It's entertaining, it's interesting, and it's got a lot of relevant issues for this presentation in it. So... Bill's solution, as I say, was to provide a mechanism to scale up the system elements, the menus and the captions and everything else on the system. Okay, and of course there's also then a mechanism for the uh, application developer to, fit, to determine what the scaling factor is as their application is running and do their own scaling. Okay. Then do whatever you need to do. However... If your application doesn't do this scaling itself, Windows helpfully will do it for you. And incidentally, none of your APL applications by default out of the box will handle the scaling themselves, okay? because you have to disable the helpful thing that Bill does for you so that you can then implement the correct thing. And the helpful thing that Bill does is he just takes the bitmap of your client error of your form, and he just stretches it out, makes it a little bit bigger, and hopefully we'll see it's a little bit blurrier. So what we can see in this picture here is this is my original form, which I screenshotted from a system that was running at 100% DPI, no scaling. This is a screen dump of the same thing taken on a system where the interpreter wasn't doing any scaling, the application wasn't doing any scaling, but the operating system was providing 150% scaling. And hopefully, this is where the 11 dots per inch that I've got here sort of makes this difficult. Hopefully, you can see that this looks a little bit blurrier than this guy because it's been bitmap stretched and that makes it look a little bit fuzzy and a little bit horrible. It, if I do that, it certainly does. If I do this, it certainly does. Okay, so just to emphasize what's happened is, and this is a bit of a lie actually, that the caption bars are nice and sharp because the operating system has, has done those sensibly. But what happens is, this bit of your application, unless you do the scaling yourself, just gets bitmap stretched and it looks a bit blurry, it looks a bit horrible, text is harder to read because there's contrast issues that kick in that make it hard to, not, not hard, but it's not as easy on the eye to look at. 
Okay, so as we've seen, it isn't always pretty to let the default thing just happen. So, the solution then that, um, that you can do is you can disable this auto magic. You can create a, a, what we call a manifest file, which is just a text file that sits in the same location as your executable. And if you configure that correctly, that tells the operating system that, hey, I'm a cool hit, one of the young kids' applications. I know how to do this scaling myself, so you don't need to do this bitmap stretching. I'll figure it all out, and I'll do it all dynamically. So you could do that. Um, you could put in the um, manifest file and in your APL code, wherever you're de deciding on the size of them, something, the height of a font, what size of an image or an icon to use. You could apply the scaling factor and everything would be sweet and everything would be lovely. But of course, a lot of you who've got applications that um, you've already written, got a lot of Code WC code, and you don't want to be rewriting that stuff to, to tweak these sizes. So what we're doing, what's new in 14.1 is some support in the interpreter to make this easier for you. And what we've done is we've done a number of things, but essentially what it boils down to is we've introduced a couple of new coordinate types. Um, in Quad WC, when you create an object, you can say, when you specify the size or the width or the height or anything like that, you can say these units are either in pixels, okay, so you want to use you know, the dots on the screen, or you can say it's a proportional coordinate type, which means that it's in a percentage of the size of the, the parent of the, ob the object that you're creating. There's another one which is user, where you can specify your own arbitrary minimum and maximum values, and the sizes you specify are somewhere within that range. So what we're doing with 14.1, um, or what we propose to do, and feedback is always important, this stuff isn't out yet, so there's plenty of time for us to review it based on any feedback. So we've got these two things. One's called scaled pixel, and the other is called real pixel. And what we've also done then is we've provided a mechanism to say, okay, if your application is using pixel and you don't want to go through it and change it all, you have a way of saying, when I say pixel, what I actually mean is one of the two things above. Okay, and that defaults to this thing called real pixel. And what scale pixel means, it tells the interpreter that, okay, I want you to do this scaling for me rather than the operating system doing it. And the advantage of that is that generally the interpreter knows more about the thing that you are applying the size to. So if you have a button, say, and you've, you've said its size is 100 by 100, and you set your coordinate type to scaled pixel and your scaling factor is 150%, the interpreter will create that button for you, but at, what did I say, 100 by 100? So it will create it at 150 by 150. If you specified I want a font which is 16 pixels high, 150% scaling, the interpreter will then create that font at 24 pixel high. Okay. Um, so generally, anything in the interpreter where we've taken a coordinate as being in units of pixels, if you have either set the coordinate type to be scale pixel or, or applied this global tweak, which we'll come to in a moment, then the interpreter will scale that for you at the, um, at the creation time of the object rather than just doing this bitmap stretch thing. Okay, so we, we worry about the position of objects, the size of objects, the size of fonts, and so on. There are a few things that we don't do. We, don't, we can't magically make an icon bigger other than by stretching it out, which is exactly what the operating system would have done anyway. We can't make bitmaps any bigger. And another thing that we decided not to make bigger was if you're using um, you know, Quad WC Poly or Quad WC Rect to create those static graphical images, we figure that if you said, I want this to be one pixel wide, then you, know, you probably mean that. You don't want us to make that bigger. You want the thinnest line that you can have. Um, so we don't apply this automatic scaling to line widths either. And, you know, we can, we can discuss, we can have a dialogue about what, um, what was it, almost a joke. We can have a discussion about um, which things you would add, like us to add to the list and which things you would like us to remove. So here, for example, then, is that same GUI created with, um, in the normal pixel coordinate system. And here's the same thing created with, uh, on a scale system, 150%. And hopefully you can see that it's not as blurry as it was before. I mean, in fact, I mean, it's not blurry at all. This is a 16 pixel high text, and this is 24 pixel high text, not 16 pixel high text, which has been 
stretched a bit at a time by the operating system. So it looks better. It certainly looks a lot better than that. Okay. It's a step in the right direction. Uh, okay, and when we, when we have um, callbacks that call back to the APL that specify the coordinate of the mouse maybe as you move it over an object, then we scale that down again so that it's symmetrical, so that you, if you're fortunate, then you have to do nothing in your, in, in your application. Coordinates will be scaled up on the way out and then back down again on the way in. And of course, real pixel just means don't do any of that. I've said it's 200 by 200 pixels. I don't care what the scaling factor is on the, on the system. Make it 200 by 200 pixels. Okay, so you get, the chance to, um, you get the chance to defeat what the interpreter would do for you and say, look, I'm clever. I figured out where, how I want the layout on this thing to be um, at, at whatever resolution. So I really mean it when I say pixels. Maybe it should say, look, really, really pixel, not just real pixel. And then, of course, the interpreter doesn't do anything. So when you say, let's create this thing at 150 by 150, then the interpreter creates it at 150 by 150 with a 16-pixel font. So generally, the least that you can do if you have an existing application is um, if you're not using pixel coordinates, then you might be okay. You might still need to change your images and your font sizes and everything, but the layouts of your graphics, of, sorry, of your user interface, your forms and your buttons and your list boxes and everything else generally will be okay. If you're using coordinate pixel, I would suggest that you set this um, environment variable or element on your command line, dialog pixel type, and we may introduce an I-beam to do this as well. If you set that to scaled pixel, that tells the interpreter that whenever you come across a coordinate type of pixel, then do this scaling for me. And see what just works. And things like this will just work. If you come across something that doesn't work, then change the coordinate type on that element only to be real pixel, and then modify your APL code to do the scaling and the layout as you, as you like. And in both cases, you'll have to worry about images and icons and everything else that we've either forgotten to do or we, we, we can't do because... We just don't know what it is. So let's look at a couple of these things then in action, and then we'll come back and we'll do the gestures quickly. So here's my, here's my desktop. I'm running at um, 1024 by 768 because that's what I need for the projector, and I'm also running at 150% scaling, which is why everything looks additionally big. So here is a 14.1 interpreter that is running out of the box. And you can see maybe that it's a little bit blurry, okay? Because again, the bits on the outside have been um, resized by the operating system, so they're nice and sharp, but all the stuff from the menu bar down looks a little bit blurry because it's been bitmap stretched. If I Start the same interpreter now using the same session file and nothing has changed. But in this case, I've created the manifest file to tell the operating system not to do anything. What we get is something that looks a lot sharper, okay, but it's half as big because it hasn't been scaled by the operating system. Okay. But hopefully, well, okay. So what we've got then, my third icon, is a 14-point icon where on the command line I've said, wherever you come across pixel, you scale pixel. And the session that's configured in Dialog APL is made with um, CodWC in the Build SE workspace. It has a coordinate type of pixel, which we've now overridden and say, rather than pixel, use scale pixel. And everything has been scaled up. OK, there's a few glitches. But hopefully you can see that, again, this is much sharper than this, because this is actually using a 24-pixel font, whereas this is using a font that's 16 that's just been stretched up. Let's look at how this might um, manifest in some applications. Here's a bit of GUI working in the, in the dialog scaling system. Here's the same GUI written with operating system bitmap scaling. And hopefully you can see they're the same size, but this one's a bit more blurry because it's been bitmap stretched. This one is nice and sharp because the interpreter said, ah, that 16 pixel font over here, I'll just make a 24 pixel font here looks a lot slicker. The example that we saw with the grid... Oh, we've gone too far, haven't we? Okay, here's that grid thing. Here's the grid thing in the 
scaled pixel case. Again, nice and sharp, a little bit blurry. Okay. Let me show you how this works in a real application. I would like to thank the CGM guys for allowing me to use their application as a demo. Just need to start their server. What I've got here is the take care system running without the interpreter doing any scaling. If I start a parallel system with the interpreter scaling in place, hopefully you can see, and as far as I'm aware, they've done no work other than all I've done is I've sat the dialog scale pixel thing on the command line. This guy on the left looks a little bit blurry. This guy on the right is nice and sharp. If I log in on both of these, <coughs> And if I log in on the both of these, get that. Now it's going to get confusing because I'm going to, on my screen, it's fairly easy to see which is the nice one and which is the less nice one. But uh, okay, as it turns out, okay, so this guy at the front, a little bit blurry. Guy at the back, nice and sharp. And we, there are some glitches where things haven't quite worked out, and we'll address those. If we uh, drill into the GUI a little bit more. This is in the. This is the case where Dialog has scaled everything. This is in the case where, the operating system has scaled everything. So hopefully, what you can see throughout is that things are getting bigger. In both cases, things have got bigger, but in the case where the interpreter has handled it with scaled pixel, it's got bigger and it's got a little bit sharper because we haven't got that blurring that's come off from the the bitmap stretching. Okay, so hopefully. What you've got there is a mechanism of taking your existing application where you've used pixel coordinates and maybe hitting 80 or 90% of the work just by with this global toggle in the interpreter. And the interpreter will do its best to handle as much of that as it can for you. Okay, I'll rock up. That's all I want to say about the DPI. I'm happy to talk to any of you, all of you, um, throughout the week. And if we have time, we'll get a couple of questions in at the end. Let's move on now to gestures, because gestures are quite interesting as well. Right, so back to the PowerPoint. OK, I'm going to have to, I've got five minutes left, so we need to shoot through this. So gestures, any of you that have used tablets, iPhones, um, tablets, or... You know, Windows tablets will be familiar with the sorts of things I'm talking about. There's a pan gesture where you, I've got one here, look, where you do a, you know, you, you swipe with a finger, or you might swipe with two fingers. There's a, um, a zoom, you've probably all done this on the maps trying to figure out how to get here. You know, you zoom in, you zoom out. Let me, let me um, actually connect these two things together. Okay, there is also the, the rotate gesture that you've probably also um, done and seen. Um, and Windows provides support for two other um, gestures, which, quite frankly, I haven't looked at to figure out how best to describe them. And we won't, we won't see any demonstrations of those. But let me show you what we can do then with Dialog APL and gestures. Now, what I've got here is a Windows Intel tablet with a touchscreen. The laptop doesn't have a touchscreen. Right, so if we're good, we've got a following wind, we're by the seaside, we're going to be fine. John, someone said, why don't you move the arrow out of the way? Okay. Right, so what you've got, huzzah, what you've got here is the, the screen that's on here, but this has got touch, and hopefully as I move around you can see where I'm jiggling it. So what we've got here is a 14.1 interpreter, which has got support for gestures within. And if I run my latent expression, what I was going to do, I was going to show you some CD art and stuff, but I figured you've probably, if you're not sick of that now, you'll be sick of it by the end of the week. So I sort of figured, okay, I can probably do, I could probably find a better set of pictures to use. Okay. <laughs> so, pan gestures. Okay, we can pick these things up and move them around. Okay. There's inertia on this, so if I do a little flick, it'll sort of keep going and it bounces when it hits the end and slides slides down the side. Okay, right, I need either a dialogue volunteer or Okay. <laughs> zoom gestures. We'll we'll take the handsome young looking chap. Okay, so here's a here's a here's a zoom gesture. 
Okay, so we can do that. Okay. Let me, um, I'll tell you what, we, what I'll, let me run this in a sort of verbose mode so that you can see what's going on. So this is now doing the same thing, but as we, uh, we can see in the session, the events as they scroll by. Okay. So what, sorry, can I, sorry, what, no, can I make the font bigger? I'll, yes, of course I can. Nice little stretch. Just your <laughs> Thank you for asking. <laughs> OK, so when we, when we do a pan, we get information about where the, um, the touch point is on the screen. When we do a zoom, sorry, Jason, we get uh, information about what the zoom factor is and the central position of the, the two points of contact. OK, and then, of course, we've got the rotates as well. <laughs> So we we'll can zoom in, two, two finger thing, twisty twist, twisty twist, twisty twist. That's your rotate gesture. Okay, my, my APL isn't quite good enough. It goes a little bit wacky when the stig's upside down. <laughs> but all is good. <laughs> when he gets around the other way. Okay, sorry, my screen resolution is just... So anyway, so what, and what we've got there, obviously, in the session, nice and big font, is we see we get the, the angle of rotation that's been asked for. And this bitmap's been rotated in real time. It's very nifty. Every time we get one of the events through, the bitmap's rotated and it's stuck back on the screen. So those are your... There are five gesture events. I've, I've shown you three of them on the touch screen. Um, obviously, a lot of controls in Win32 will have their own built-in support for the gestures. You know, list boxes will probably allow you to click and drag to select multiple items and stuff. So you'd probably generally only use this stuff you know, in what I've got here is a bunch of little subforms which don't have any built-in functionality, but you can add on to them whatever you want. And of course, it was useful that we added that to the session as well, so that we could zoom in and out on the font, on the font there. So there you go. You've got your gestures uh, and you've got your DPI. Two things that we think are good things going forward, bringing APL a little bit closer to being up to date on the Win32 Quad WC front. I have a minute and a half for questions. So please, if you do have a question, wait till the microphone gets to you. Otherwise, we're all in trouble. So hand in the air if you have a question, and then we'll get a mic to you as soon as we can. If they're on, yeah. Uh, are, you dealing, are you dealing with the fact that uh, DPI, I think, differs in the X and Y direction often? Um, I think the answer to that question is that it these days doesn't differ in the X and Y direction. My... Um, research while I have been doing this has generally been that these days everything is carefully configured so that it's the same in the X and Y direction. A related question um, is these days you can have two monitors attached which have got different DPIs and at the moment we're not planning on doing anything about that. If you want to support that properly you'll have to do that yourself. Okay. Um, but our position on that may change as well. But, and I may be wrong on the, on the X and Y stuff, but my research has shown that these days everything's pixels are nice and square things. Anything else? Great, in which case it's time for my first cup of coffee of the day. Thank you. Thank you.